Welcome back everyone. This talk's going to be about the QHY 585C. I've been using it since the end of November, start of December, and I thought I'd put my thoughts together and um, do my bit for the hobby and um, give people a bit of information, a bit of understanding of what you can expect while using one of these and um, and put back into the community basically because most of what I've learnt in planetary imaging has come from the internet, um, YouTube, Twitter, stuff like that. Generous people giving their time to uh, help others. So looking to do the same thing. I've thought about the outcome of this review of the camera for uh, a while now and how I would put put it into words, verdict, or something like that, rather than just saying, ah, it's all right, and yeah, mm -hmm, stuff like that. I think I could sum it up best by saying, like I've used a couple of different cameras now, but if I had to use only one camera going forward, I'd pick this one. Um, it does visible light extremely well. It does the lower end or anything below the 850 in IR, pretty good. Um, 680 below 700 it's really good as well um, 850 starts to taper off and its response when you're using methane like the, the the narrow band around the late 800 nanometer band it starts to struggle then but is to be expected um, we've all become accustomed to what the 462c cameras can do and they are a pretty high standard and you imagine if you took that camera out of the equation this would probably be right up there in IR response for all the cameras around. So, um, yeah, really happy with the camera, and that'd be it. The verdict would be, if I could use only one, it'd be this one. Um, if that's all you wanted to hear, just a quick verdict, then there you go. Um, if not, stick around, because I'll show you why I think that this would be the camera I'll pick. Um, I've got videos comparing it with other cameras, and the noise profiles at different wavelengths of light, and I've also got um, images taken with it. So stick around and we'll have a look. So the 585 is the direct descendant of the 485, which I also own. Um, if you're making comparisons with the 485 and different price points, one thing you should know is the 485, you cannot shoot IR or UV with it. The front glass, is um, a UV IR cut filter and also the threaded portion inside the front glass is smaller than the one and a quarter inch filters that we all use for um, imaging. So you can get away with um, unscrewing the front glass using a filter wheel. I had a bit of a muck around with that myself but um, obviously the camera is not designed to do that and it's sold on the website as a, um, a colour only camera. I'll put a thing up here and show you, it's written there right on the website. So if it's designed not really to shoot outside the spectrum, then you're probably better off not mucking around with it. Let's see how we go. Um, the, the Bayer Matrix is still over the top of the pixels, but it's usually a bit wider than the, the front glass filter. So uh, I did get some reasonable results with it, but it might have just been a reasonable night. So the two new cameras released from QHY, the 585 and the 200M uh, mono camera, they're both classified as version two cameras of this older design. Um, they all have some changes to them that the other cameras didn't have. Um, the 585's got 512 megabytes of DDR3 buffer in there, which takes a lot of the strain off your PC when, um, when using it, especially at the bigger frame rates and um, data transfers that you can get. It really, it really helps. Um, so people with new computers might not notice much difference, but people on older computers, you'll see far less drop frames and and um, bottlenecking, stuff like that. And also, 
you might not see it there. Um, the new I.O., the new input is USB-C and it has much higher data rate than the, um, the older USB 3 version of plug. So going forward, that's probably a good sign. It's a transition made. We'll see how that pans out. The 585C uses the IMX585 Sony sensor and it's advertised as having similar performance to the 462C, which is the standard for uh, imaging in IR with a color cam. It's really, really good. Um, the 585 also has three times the um, full wheel capacity of the 485C and um, so much better dynamic range across the board with this new sensor. So the 585 image is extremely well in visible light and um, they're getting closer and closer colour cams these days to um, mono cams where at the moment you could image side by side with a mono cam and a colour cam, derotate the same captures and stick them down side by side and you'd really have to pix pixel peep to uh, work out which was which and if you have them separately people don't know, no one knows unless you tell them it's mono versus colour. Um, the, the standard really is that good these days and the amount of work to process a colour cam versus a mono cam is less than half so you really save time at the back end when using a colour cam and I think going forward if I'm going to image invisible light that's what I'll use just save so much mucking around you get like a one or two percent benefit nobody can tell these days um, they really are getting that good colour cams so that's another great thing about the colours. So if anyone was to have any doubts about purchasing the 585, I think they'd be surrounding its uh, infrared performance. So I'll put a comparison up here next to me. Um, one with the, the 462C colour chip shooting in IR and the other will be 685 nanometer and the 850 nanometer while using the 585C. Um, both of these were shot within minutes of each other and also shot on the same, um, the same image train. The, the sensor for the um, 462C, because it's a different camera design, it's a little bit more magnified, but you can see here, it does really well when comparing it to the best color cam IR sensor that is currently on the market, realistically. Um, two years ago, the 585 would have been in a pretty good league as far as IR goes. It's only since that uh, 462 chip has come out that um, imaging in IR in colour has, has basically become a norm, a normal thing to do. So it's really good. And the 585, I believe, performs really well. Um, it's only when you get up into methane that it'll start to fall apart. So that's another big plus. There's not that many people shooting in methane these days um, with just one camera. You've got to remember this larger sensor size, it's um, extremely good for ISS passes, moon mosaics, conjunctions, like that sensor's twice the size of um, the colour cam here I've got, the um, 462C chip I've got, and it's four times the size of the actual QHY um, 462C chip. It's a it's a pretty big sensor for a planetary camera, so there's there's a lot of bonuses for this this camera here, I believe, as far as the usage and use case scenario goes. For ninety percent of people, this camera will do everything they want it to do. It's only when you get into the um, the more experienced guys that are regularly shooting outside the norm that um, things begin to change and let's face facts like most people love seeing the planets in visible light so um, I know 85 percent of my imaging is done in visible light as well because um, it, it really it gives a lot more depth to all of the planets when seen in visible light so um, that's really good but um, if you are uh, much more experienced and really want to tackle UV and the higher levels of IR um, well, maybe you would go with um, the new mono 
462C mono camera. It's it's really looks like it's going to be a very good camera as well. So um, we'll see how that goes. I haven't had my hands on one yet, but uh, hopefully soon. I'll now put some images up on the screen that I've shot with the 585. Um, most of them were shot using my 16 inch uh, DOB on my EQ platform and they were at the correct pixel scale or the desired pixel scale of like 0.1 arc seconds per pixel. Um, you can push it past that or I start to struggle on that scope with um, tracking issues when I start getting beyond 7,000 millimetres of focal length so I sort of stick around that for the time being. Um, there's also a couple of images with the 24 uh, on there but it's undersampled for the, um, the camera using the 24 because I'm still using the, um, the 16 inch uh, image train. So um, it's a bit blocky or it looks to me to be a bit blocky. I don't know how you guys will see it, whether you'll notice, but also um, the images taken with the 24, it was very windy um, that night, especially for the Jupiter image. So there's a bit of smearing in that, but anyway, um, have a look and see what you think. The, I didn't really have excellent seeing uh, at any time while having this camera. Um, I think I, I may have got to like six or seven, something like that, so out of, out of ten. So some of the nights were not too bad, but um, I really look forward to uh, seeing what it can do when I have some, some really good nights. Here's the Mars images shot with the um, 585C and the first two were shot on the 3rd of December at 17 arc seconds in size and um, showing good detail. Um, the next one was shot on the 27th with the, um, the 24 inch scope at 15 arc seconds and the, third, the last image was um, with the 16 inch uh, on the 11th of January at 13 arc seconds in size. So all of them not too bad. As I said before, the, the conditions weren't superb, but um, we made it work. They don't look too bad at all. So here's four Jupiter images shot with the 585C. Um, two on the left hand side were shot on the 3rd of December and the two on the right hand side were shot using the 24 inch dob on the 27th. And the IR images was, uh, the IR image uh, with the 24 was actually shot in broad daylight. Um, I could even probably put some footage up and um, to show you the condition. So it's pretty amazing that we can get that image even in broad daylight. Um, very, very windy. You can see in the color image is a bit smeared, um, but uh, it, it affects a lot less in IR. So that's why you can't really tell. It doesn't look the difference. The atmosphere, um, IR cuts through the atmosphere a fair bit better than in the color light spectrum. Here's an image of Uranus, um, shot with a 24 RGB, 3.6 arc seconds. Um, nice little image, um, shot between trees. <laughs> um, and I'd, I'd like to have another go at it. Uh, I'll, I'll look forward to have another go at it with that camera, with the correct image train. The 24 should really have like a four or five X Barlow uh, ADC and then camera on the end of that um, to be up over 10,000 millimeters of focal length to really do the camera justice. And, um, but there's no real detail on Uranus, so it doesn't really matter. Um, shot in visible light, you're not gonna see much. So uh, that's what this one is, but it was a bit of a um, shoot through the trees while I've got some time thing and pretty happy with how it turned out. Um, have a look here. Some moon in images shot with the 585. We've got Grisendi Crater, which I shot maybe only two nights ago. Um, shot in March. Um, also the Schiller Crater image was shot two nights ago. But um, the Copernicus and Plato craters were shot in December, I believe. And they're nice little images there as well. So you can see 
you're going to get a pretty good standard of image. And like I said, these aren't by any means shot in uh, unbelievable conditions or anything like that. It's a pretty standard sort of... I won't sit outside and waste my time if it's going to be crap, but um, we'll look at these ones. So, Clavius Crater image shot two nights ago, and um, the Aristarchus Crater image as well, shot a couple of nights ago. So, nice images again. So, overall, as I said, I really like the 585C. I can definitely recommend it, unless you are top-end imager that really wants to just do a lot of UV and IR stuff, um, as well as your visible light imaging. Um, but then again, if you're top end imaging, you're not watching this video anyway. So it's, it's definitely a very good camera. And like I said, out of all the cameras I've used in the past, this one ticks the most boxes for me. If I had to use just one, I'd be happy with this one. Um, but it, it does everything. It gives me a really good um, image FOV, uh, so I can I can chase after the ISS with 2x Barlow on it. I can do, um, as I said before, conjunctions. I've got a couple of conjunctions. Um, you can see here Jupiter and Venus and um, Saturn and Mars, and uh, it, it's the sensor size is really beneficial, and it also allows when you are shooting at um, bigger focal lengths, if you want to use the full chip. You can definitely get the moons. You can get all the moons in um, on Jupiter on most nights, unless Callisto's right off in the bushes. You can definitely get them all in. So um, that's about it. If I could pick just one camera to use, if I only had to use one camera, this would be it. So well done, QHY and Co. Sony, and um, I look forward to seeing what you. Get next. Bye for now.